Hey, Mr. Architect, I can't merge my pull request. GitHub says it's blocked. Let me take a quick look. Um, your change doesn't fit. Well, it's code not choose how it doesn't fit. Look, the fitness function is failing. Fitness function? What are you talking about? We're a software company, not the gym. Let me explain. Hello and welcome back to the Architecture Weekly YouTube channel. Today we're talking about fitness function and by the end of this video you're gonna know what fitness function are, what are their pros and cons and how they help to evolve our software architectures. Let's go! When you design a software system you always start with the requirements. How many users we want to support? How secure our system should be? how scalable we expect the system to be next year. We call those items architecture attributes or non-functional requirements. And while for the functional requirements we can always write some union tests or integration tests and see if the functionality works, for the non-functional requirements it's a little harder. You also have such attributes as maintainability. Let's take a look at the example. So here you can see the very simplified version of a right handling system. A mobile application and then the order system that will match the riders and drivers and so on and then some money system which will issue invoices make the payments and send the invoices through an email so what we see here is that the data flow in the system has one direction from top to bottom but then you hire more developers and they evolve the system and new legal requirements come in and you find out that you need more data in the invoice. And your system starts looking like this, because the developers, instead of uh, adding something into the order system and pass it down to the money system, they decided that they will do an API call upwards. And this breaks your data flow and decreases the maintainability of the system. So the question you are asking yourself is uh, how to prevent those situations how to maintain the architecture and its principles for several years and how do you actually govern the development and evolution of your system. Here, fitness functions can help a lot. Let's figure out how to come up with a simple fitness function. First of all, you pick up the architectural characteristic that you want to check, be it maintainability, scalability, performance, security, resilience or any other ability. For each of the functions, you need to define the way to measure it. For example, for performance, you can come up with measuring the latency. For resilience, you can check uh, how many deployments fail. Or for security, you can check if you find out any secrets hard-coded in your codebase. You can create fitness function for pretty much any architectural characteristic of your system, be it the code quality, resiliency, observability, performance security, and even compliance. For example, you can come up with a fitness function that would check that your logs do not contain personal identification information so that you are compliant with some of the GDPR requirements. You can distinguish fitness functions by its nature or how they are triggered, if they are automated or manual, but such classifications are more formal than practically usable, so I will not elaborate on that. What is more interesting is what benefits the fitness functions uh, give us in general. So first of all, they allow us to communicate, validate and preserve architectural characteristics of our systems in a continuous manner. These functions can also help to clarify the product requirements and architecture and align us on the definition of done. We can also receive the real-time feedback for the changes that we as a team perform to the system and know that something got broken. Also, fitness function can uh, really help us during the refactorings and see if our changes do not break uh, any major architectural characteristic. But fitness functions or any checks uh, do not come free, so you need to really put uh, effort and thought into designing those functions and understanding are they really helpful in a particular situation. Hold up, hold up! What you're describing is just non-functional requirements testing. Same test on performance, resiliency, even security. 
The only difference is you're saying is that you always need a number for everything. And now you're just calling it uh, fancy fitness functions. You got me. Actually, even in the tech radar by ThoughtWorks, architecture fitness functions are not present since 2019. So yeah, unfunctional requirements testing is the term you're looking for.